Geo, welcome to Cherokee Now. Today we have Rick Strom with us. Rick is the Office Administrator of Cherokee Broadband. Rick, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking a moment to come on and tell everyone about the services that your uh, wonderful program provides. Awesome. Well, thank you, Chris, for having us, uh, having me, and I uh, look forward to uh, getting out what we need to to the community members to let, us, let the community members know who Cherokee Broadband is and some of our services. Good. Well, starting with that, tell me a little bit about Cherokee Broadband. When did it get started, and what was the purpose behind it? All right. Cherokee Broadband um, got started in 2008 as a tribal enterprise, which is 100% owned by the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Um, it got started because of the need for internet in the community. Right. Um, and obviously that need still exists today. So an enterprise, that's, that is designed to uh, function as a company almost and make, and make a profit on its own. That is correct. It, now it, something recently happened in the last past few years where it's been converted into a public utility, is that correct? Yes, a tribal utility, you are correct. Tell, so tell me about what the services are that you provide for the public as a tribal utility. Well, as a tribal utility, um, that allows us to keep the price point the same. Our goal is to obviously break even or make money for the tribe. Um, but the main goal of the tribal utility is taking internet, kind of like your water and sewer, taking internet from, uh, you know, a luxury in the past to okay. a necessity, which it has literally become. You're always going to have your gamers. You're always going to have your movie right. watchers and Netflix goers. Uh, but uh, as far as EMS and police and fire um, and just community as a whole, uh, it has really become a necessity. And it's the tribe has focused it on us becoming a tribal utility for the simple reason that uh, we can't depend on anybody else. So who, uh, who are the providers in town and what are some of their limitations that you can fill the gap of? Okay. Our main competitor in town would be Cherokee Cable Vision. Um, they're always going to be a competitor of ours just because of Channel 28. Right. Uh, a lot of people subscribe just for that, uh, for council. Um, the difference between Cherokee Broadband and Cherokee Cable Vision, we offer unlimited data. Mm -hmm. So you can use our service as much or as little as you want, and you're going to get that same flat rate, no overage fees, where they do have data caps at Cherokee Cable Vision. Okay, and they also have a reach issue. Is that something that you find also, or is there, or do you have some advantages there as well? Well, we'll talk a, a little bit more about the reach uh, think, as we move as forward. We as we go forward, but okay. uh, right now they are limited. They are coaxial. Uh, they're copper. Uh, we're limited, being Cherokee broadband. Uh, we're wireless right now, okay. strictly wireless. Gotcha. So. Moving forward uh, with the program, now that we've got a new initiative to become a public service and, or a public utility, mm -hmm. what are some of the plans that you have coming up next for, for the program? Well, it's, it's very exciting, actually, to talk about. Um, we have a major fiber build-out uh, going throughout the whole Kuala Boundary, um, 3,200 acres, Snowbird County, and, or Snowbird, and Cherokee County. Okay. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is step away from the wireless, total wireless. Right now, meaning... Cherokee Broadband is wireless if you cannot see our tower. Um, if you can see our tower in the winter, uh, then trees come up in the summertime. And you lose and the, the service. And the leaves, you're going to lose I've the service. I've had that very problem with <laughs> Cherokee Broadband. <laughs> well, we always get, well, why can't you service us? And then I, we can see your tower. It's like, but you can't see it all the time. What right. the fiber build out is allowing us to do, uh, and this has been great to work with uh, EBCI and EBCI IT as well, uh, that's bringing fiber to all of our towers. So okay. uh, our main tower is Mount Noble, which I think everybody's familiar with up here on the mountain. Yep. Um, allowing us to have fiber will take away from strictly wireless, meaning that we can do small footprint towers to reach people. We could work with Duke Energy to use their pole attachment agreements to put some of our small equipment on and then shoot to the little haulers where you might have five or ten families that other companies – let's say Frontier or HughesNet, which is expensive, but basically Frontier, they're not going to see a return on the investment. So uh, they're so not willing to go put that in. Willing to put but it we in. as a public utility are willing to go put those pieces in, in and get everybody yes, connected. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, internet being a, uh, a necessity now, right. uh, we have to do it for our people. So and what's the possibilities? What I mean, where can you go with that? Can folks in Big Cove have this? Uh, folks in Big Cove, yes. Fiber is being run up to the Big Cove Loop. Um, <laughs> we've got it going down Old Soco Road, Jenkins Creek, all the way up to Rough Branch. Um, the goal is to take care of our people, take care of anybody on the Kuala Boundary, 3,200 acres, Snowbird, Cherokee County. Okay. Uh, but there's no reason to stop there. Uh, the main goal of Cherokee Broadband, love to see it expand to the towns of Whittier. We're actually talking with the towns of Bryson City right now. Uh, our Long Branch Tower, um, Verizon is constructing a new 195 foot tower. Okay. Uh, we're able to take the 125 foot tower that we have right now and utilize it somewhere else. So again, we're in talks with Bryson and we're in talks with other towns. Um, love to see Cherokee Broadband obviously saturated here on the Kuala Boundary, but there's no reason to stop there. 
Now, is this going to reach every home on the boundary? Every home, uh, we're we're looking at a hundred percent. When we set out on this, knowing that a hundred percent is a huge, you know, with the terrain. If yeah. we were living in, you know, South Georgia, you put yeah. up a pole and everybody has internet, and we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Right. Uh, but with the terrain, um, it makes it difficult. Right. Uh, but we are looking to hit one hundred percent. Okay. What what kind of time frame or timeline are we looking at with those kind of rollouts? That's a good question too. Okay, <laughs> um, very exciting right now. Um, people in the Goose Creek area, uh, talking to you, um, <laughs> the tower actually is constructed. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, fiber will be to that tower. Now, okay. what you're going to see in the community um, is Verizon 4G LTE being rolled out. You're going to start taking advantage of that, which is a huge necessity in itself, um, and a, and a big jump in communication right from the dark ages to 2017. Yes. Um, so you're going to see that first. Um, and then we're going to be able to come back in at Cherokee Broadband again and be able to fill in the areas. So the Goose okay. Creek area will start getting filled in. We're looking at late winter, spring, uh, okay. when Cherokee Broadband is really going to hit the ground. But if it's sooner than that, we're re- we're ready to rock and roll. And that's just in that area. Or, is that, or are you talking about across the board? Um, that's in that area. And uh, Barnet Knob, they strengthen Barnet Knob. So Basically, what it's going to do is give us the fiber redundancy, okay. and then we can come back in and fill it in. I know Big Y and Big Witch will be on the next one. Uh, Long Branch going all the way up Old Soco, uh, Washington's Creek. What are what are some time frames for those folks? Uh, it should be spring. 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 Uh, so we're talking within a calendar year here. Exactly. We should have this rolled into most of the communities. Exactly. And, most of the and a lot of people have asked, why why haven't you been advertising before? Our network right now is at capacity, and I okay. hate to say that, but it is. Uh, meaning it, that it, meaning that you have so many people signed up right now with the bandwidth that with you've the been bandwidth allowed. that we had. Now we also had ne- negotiations with Balsam West for a ten gig network. Now this is what's going to allow us to get. So us what are we at right patterns. now? Right now, we were at 300 megs. Okay. Uh, and if people don't know, every 1,000 megs is one gig. So you're talking uh, about a 10 gig. I'm talking about a 10, 10 gig thousand network. Megs. 10, thousand megs. Okay. And that will allow us to get, because our current packages are one and four meg. Okay. And now, 2008, when that happened, uh, was that was okay. Hey, that's better than nothing. When, when you were, uh, were downloading JPEGs and, and exactly, 280p video. Exactly. But now that every website has Flash and all that good stuff, and you're seeing everything coming in. Yeah and you can actually count on it, um, it's not good. In fact, uh, President Obama's initiative, uh, I know that he said 25 megs or under is not even considered broadband. Right. Um, so our standards have all have to come up, uh, and that started with working with Balsam West on a 10 gig network, it started working with uh, Verizon Wireless to be able to put fiber in the ground, and it started with the tribe to realize that, hey, we need to do it for ourselves and right. our people. And so that's where the fiber build out comes. And then in the future, the exciting thing is we're going to be able to offer instead of packages of one and four meg, uh, 25, 50 and 100 meg to the house. Wow. Ballpark, I wouldn't want to want you to lock in anything on camera here, but what would someone expect to pay for these packages? The good thing is being the tribal utility, being that we our main goal is to break even, um, we're not going to be much more, I would say. If you're looking at the 100 meg, now 100 megs, that's just to show off. But I mean, who wouldn't want to do it? Right. But 25 megs, you could do multiple streaming devices, multiple Netflix. Kid can be gaming. Uh, you can have your thermostat, your refrigerator. I mean, everything's moving to right. you know, Wi-Fi. Uh, 25 megs would be sufficient for probably, I'd say, about 75% of okay. the population. 50 megs. Now you're looking at your heavy gamers and stuff like that while you have kids and still want to do Folks that. Folks like me, I don't. I have satellite, so I watch almost everything exclusively through the web. Well, and that's where and that's TV's going. Where I need that. TV's yeah. going to that. Even you see Direct TV, you're able to uh, pick your channels. Okay. Uh, PlayStation View is out there. Uh, so what I'm saying is, 25 meg right now for 75 percent of the people. Five years from now, you know, houses may need 100 meg. Right. right? But we want to have the ability, and with the 10 gig network, with the fiber, this isn't capped at that we have the ability to move Maneuver forward. The only thing that's going to stop the speeds of Cherokee Broadband and the tribe would be the equipment that comes out. There's okay. always new technology, but as that comes out, you replace we'll the equipment you have and, and you keep going. So I need a 25 meg connection down the road. Am I looking at 50, 75 dollars? Well, right now we're looking at 39.95 for a one meg. We're looking at, these are current prices, right. uh, four megs at 49.95. Um, I would love to see that kind of transfer. I'd love to see it transfer over. What we're going to look at is probably 50 megs at 69. Okay. Uh, and don't hold me to this. Okay. <laughs> this Please is don't all, hold Rick don't to hold this, me. y'all. Yeah. There needs to be <laughs> a disclaimer just, at the bottom just, of this. Uh, this is just <laughs> but, kind of um, giving people an idea of where we're going to go. 50 megs, you're probably getting closer to 90 bucks. 
Okay. Uh, and then if you wanted the 100 megs, you're probably in the 115 to 120. Okay. Still going to stay with unlimited data. Okay. I do not want, uh, and we do not as a tribe collectively uh, and as broadband, uh, we don't want data restrictions. I okay. want you to be able to use it as much or as little as you want. Okay. Um, and it will be wide open. And that, again, uh, that'll bring us up not only to real world standards, mm-hmm. but now we're competitive. Okay. Now we can, because Frontier, I think their max is about six megs. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, in the field that I'm in with video mm-hmm. and, and photography and the, the up some band. giant files I use, <laughs> I'm on the 12 meg down and one meg up. Okay. On Frontier. And how's that working? And it's, su- it's slow. Okay. It's okay. slow. So and you, it's not, a, I don't so want to knock Frontier out there. you're looking forward to 50 and 100 meg connection. I look forward. <laughs> now, will that 50 or that 25, will it mm-hmm. be, what will the upload speeds be? Oh, you're going to be looking at... Uh, Again, this is still in the works. Twenty-five down, probably five or ten up, which is much better. Much than better. It's right five now. times what you're getting right now. Right. If you're doing the fifty, I guarantee you'd be in the ten to fifteen up. Okay. So it'll be That's uh, excellent. It'll be it'll be comparable to I would say Nashville awesome. or anything like That's that. That's exciting. I know we've been screaming for it for a long time. So. And, and so what what's coming next? What's after that? I mean, are we going to start then taking the program and branching it out and looking at ways to exactly to generate some more revenue exactly outside of town? i want cherokee broadband to be a obviously a big revenue uh maker for the tribe uh taking care of our people but then being able to branch out to like i've said whittier uh for our fiber what's the runs. reach what well, how far can we go with this well it's it's uh, with the fiber there now we have fiber we have a local ring of 28 miles uh but that fiber runs right past whittier's front door on the highway okay. runs right through and i don't know if anybody knows this right through uh downtown bryson city up That's everett street goes to the hospital and to the high school uh and then you're going all the way out 28 uh all the way out to uh robbinsville okay. so there's no reason not to hit the alarcas and um and again this is all going to be creative i know we've talked about fry mountain we've talked about some other things basically if we bring a tower that can see the towns of Whittier, uh, towns of Bryson, like above 3,200 right. acre track. And I think Kuala Housing has some land we're all talking about. Um, we can shoot down. And what's beautiful, once you put the fiber there, you can have point-to-point towers, small footprint towers that are going up a lark or whatever and just using it as a relay going up and then using our equipment to blast little certain areas. Okay. So. So, so basically, it's uh, the door's wide open. Now, there is a large upfront cost to getting all this infrastructure put there in. There is. There is. Now, that was the biggest thing. Which um, is part of the discussion that our, our leadership about, handled. And, and exactly. You're, uh, to run a mile of fiber is about $60,000. Oh, wow. So, and, so the return and that's, on that that's, investment's that's, <laughs> tough to get when you're <laughs> exactly. running it to two families. And exactly. And that's if the terrain's perfect. You obviously want to take fiber underground. Uh, it, that takes care of it in, in right. the coax. It takes care of it from trees falling or whatever. But with our terrain, Sometimes we have to run it every so okay what uh what's what's a way for people to get in touch with you i mean obviously you're, you're at capacity now but as as moving forward if people want to kind of stay tuned to what you're doing glad you asked uh we're doing a huge social media campaign right now um you can always find us at cherokeebroadband.com okay uh we are also at facebook.com forward slash uh cherokee broadband okay uh we also have a twitter handle at c-h-e broadband all one word um we're also on snapchat uh, you can find us on there. And again, if you go to our um, Facebook page, we have all the links to everything like okay. that. Uh, Instagram, where do we stop? You're all over the place. Well, we're you? trying. So basically you're everywhere. We're trying. We're getting out there. Okay. Well, is there anything else? Do you have any other services that, that Cherokee Broadband offers, or is it pretty much the internet at this point? Basically, um, we've been instructed by the tribe. Uh, we were doing too much at the beginning. Okay. Uh, being a tribal enterprise, like you had stated previously, our goal was to obviously make as much money as we can. So we were doing network servicing. We were even fixing computers. Oh, wow. I mean, that's where it came down to. <laughs> uh, anything to uh, to get above that line. Um, and we love doing that. But becoming a tribal utility, they put some uh, restraints on us in a good way. Um, okay. We're focusing on bringing internet to the people, and that's it. We're, good. we're not going to do television. We're not doing phones. Um, and like you said previously as well, you're able to pay for your channels now. The yep. only thing that's stopping people from that kind of entertainment is the bandwidth. And right. that's where we come in. We're going to offer big bandwidth and let the people pick and choose what they want to do. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time to join us today to tell us about Cherokee Broadband. And anytime you have any updates uh, or any new projects or when you're ready to roll out these new packages, sign me up and come on the show and let's (laughs) let's get folks uh, aware of what's happening. Love to. And and, uh, everybody that's out there, you can contact me directly by calling our office at 359-1000. Love to chat. Love to tell you if you have any questions. uh, We're always there for the community and we're looking forward to uh, doing big things for the community and our people.
Good deal. Well, that'll be it for today. If you're listening at home and would like to comment on the show or ask questions regarding what we've discussed today, please comment on our EBCI Cherokee Now Facebook page at facebook.com slash Cherokee Now. We'll see you again very soon. Data Dog, I'll hang you.